Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. The question of leadership plagues us still in 2021. Thank you for tuning in for The Advocate. Welcome. Today, my myth is with the unnecessary meddling of UN Women Nigeria in the local politics of Kogi State and the sheer arrogance of its leadership. Liberus is talking about situational unawareness among Nigeria's leadership and the continuing cost to the nation. The prospects of the extension of Lagos Ibadan standard gauge rail to the Apapa port engages the attention of Bolahon. While for Jumoke, it is the astronomical electricity rates in 2021, despite the distribution of less than 5,000 megawatts of power. Evans is troubled by the tragedy of the commons in a shared resource system. In other words, the un uneven distribution of wealth. Well, as always, your five panelists are here to share ideas aimed at provoking thoughts with no holes barred. Stay with us for a mix of sober reflections, laughter, and education after this break. Quoting Yahya Bello, UN Women Nigeria, goofed. Women the world over rejoiced when UN women birthed in 2010. Finally, our own special UN entity that can truly look after us and which we can own was activated. Bravo! It will champion gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls, work with governments and civil societies to design laws, policies, programs and services that will truly benefit women and girls worldwide. Today I'm compelled to make this advocacy by what I see as an unnecessary meddling of UN Women Nigeria in the local politics of Kogi State and the sheer arrogance of its leadership even when well-meaning women wrote in protest to the entity. Governor Yahya Bello of Kogi State had recently appointed women as deputy chairpersons in all 21 local governments of the state and that forms the basis of the commendation from UN Women. It amounted to rubbing salts to injury and a follow-follow move. Because earlier on, the National Council of Women's Societies, in the spirit of Shekarimi, decorated Governor Yahya with the most gender-sensitive governor award and a he-for-she goodwill ambassador. Many Nigerian women are screaming, for what? Hey, wonders will never end. Let's backtrack a little to examine this move from the governor and the overall treatment of women and their welfare in Kogi State. Under the governor's watch, the opposition PDP women leader in Kogi State, Ms. Salome Abu, was burnt to death in her home during the last gubernatorial election in the state. Justice is yet to be served. During the same election, an opposition gubernatorial candidate, Ms. Natasha Akpoti, was allegedly attacked by thugs from the governor's party repeatedly. A commissioner in his cabinet was recently accused of sexual assault. Nothing significant was done about it. Now compare that with a similar case in Ogun State, where a commissioner was accused of attempted rape. Governor Abiodun swiftly suspended the commissioner pending conclusion of investigations. Governor Bello is yet to domesticate the Violence Against Persons Act 2015, which was passed at the National Assembly. Local government chairmen and their deputies ought to be elected, not appointed. 
So what Governor Yahya Bello did was in fact undemocratic and unconstitutional. It borders on tokenism. It shouldn't be condoned, encouraged, nor commended. So like the proverbial rat that eats away at one's toe and blows air on it, Governor Bello employs the tactics of seeming inclusiveness, yet is silent on instances of gross discrimination and violence against women. And the governor has milked this commendation for women inclusiveness in Kogi for the political capital it called. It's so unfortunate that UN Women Nigeria has not done sufficiently well in speaking up for the rights of women in Kogi. It has inadvertently given impetus to the presidential ambition of the same governor with this commendation. Influential women and CSOs should note that the conspiracy of silence and cover-up of UN women's infraction is a betrayal of the trust of ordinary Nigerian women in you. It's not looking like because many of you are grantees, you're abating this betrayal. UN Women Nigeria has compromised our celebrated rapper. Remember the First Lady of Ekiti, Mrs. Fayemi's famous 2019 speech? UN Women should repair this rapper if willfully tall. Apologize to the women of Kogi State in particular, and Nigerian women in general. Wow. I'm waiting. <laughs> ah, she don't yeah. beg. I'm yeah, waiting right. for this apology. It, it, it is yeah. double standard. Yes, I mean, now. Where a governor in one hand is um, uh, making appointments where the law provides that those offices are, are elective offices. Imagine. You are making appointment and then you are appointing women to that. And at the same time, your, your track <laughs> record, your past, and then the situation and circumstances in that state where women have been highly diminished, harassed, harassed and affected by the affairs of uh, different persons in that state, the governor has been silent. And I think the governor is operating like an emperor. Perhaps he sees the state as his personal property. And that is why, if he you look at like, the, 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 like the, even the COVID-19 um, issue, he, yeah. he, he, take, he took it like the state is his personal business, mm. that he can mm. do whatsoever he likes. But, 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 but that's I the way most of them do anyway. Yeah. And mm. I was going to also add to your advocacy that Natasha Akoti's um, uh, political office actually was actually burnt down. Not only was she attacked Maybe. many times, and she came out to, before her office was eventually burnt down, she had shown how oh, electoral materials had gone out just before the elections, you know. Well, like and you, say, you say she was attacked. It's... Um, means that probably she, probably she was attacked in the house, right in the presence of the IGL police. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right in the From presence the of the IGL of police. The party. In the I presence see. of INEC chair, it was the stakeholders meeting. Normally, INEC would call it stakeholders. It was mm. at that place that she was attacked, <laughs> and, and the heavens didn't fall. So let, let's, um, you, you know, last week we talked about this, um, that your advocacy was on tokenism. Yeah. And it is the same thing here. <laughs> um, um, the, even the office of the chairman, has been so, of local government has been so relegated, not to even talk of vice chairman now. Oh. In my place, <laughs> in my place, my younger ones will say, um, the office of the chairman now, the only thing they do, when a location comes, they come and you say, hey, chairman, take your own, uh, vice, take your own, treasurer, take your own, <laughs> and me, I don't take my own. That's the only thing they do. So, he had the office of the deputy governor, he didn't appoint a woman. How True. many portfolios he didn't give to women in his as cabinet commissioners. as commissioners. As commissioners. True. You know? So if you look across board, is it just to, you know, and then you, the annoying part for me is that, you know, when they do these things, they now gather a few women and then the offices that are created to celebrate genuine people, they gather those ones that they, you, you know, um, how do I, I'm looking for the word now. They now use that, or they desecrate that office mm -hmm. by now going to endorse Slavishly, clannishly, you know, people who. That's the that's, word. That's, that's what the, the, the UN women uh, uh, are First, the NCWS uh, did this. Do you know, uh, during the Woman Manifesto last year in Abuja, I was part of the women who walked from Women's Center Abuja to the Ministry of Women Affairs protesting the death of Salome. Mm. 
Yeah. Yeah. You should go out and walk. I should walk. <laughs> I, I'm feeling like, <laughs> do you know, I'm that, feeling that, you. That, that, now, that, that is, now, not, that is not going to happen. Secret. Go out yeah. and walk. In, in, in the first it's, instance, um, you know, the, the, the caliber of people that are occupying the, the local these government. These offices. They, they, they're not Who quite there, there in, in reality. We've Again. had powerful persons occupy those offices. In, I don't need you. was a local government chairman in, in, in Lagos State here at some point. Right. As at the time, Lagos Island raised bond in Nigeria, 80% of the state have never raised the bond in of, this country. Unfortunately. So that, that is the way things ought to be. But somehow we lost it along the line and where people are now compensating. You are gifting it as if out of my generosity, yeah. I'm you know, giving this that women. Is why when you, this, this, that is why when it happens, let yeah. me give you, in this, uh, no, it was a quite bomb. I was watching a seminar from South Africa and then um, the... After the seminar, the participants were interviewed on the gains from the seminar. And all the participants from Nigeria, the first word that came out from their mouth was, oh, I thank the amiable governor that is it. who saw the need for I, this. You can't say governor. His excellency. excellency, without putting his excellency, it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not complete. Yes, because the, at the, the end of the day, when they're I'm going able. home, everybody goes with the brown or white envelope. Uh, Unfortunately, when we have um, organizations as reputable as the UN, you know, do this, it discourages the minute percentage of people who want to do right, you know, as citizens, because we see that doing right is not encouraged in the society. Doing right is not encouraged in the society, but we'll keep trying. Next, Libras is talking about situational unawareness among Nigeria's leadership and the continuing cost to the nation. There's no capital more useful than intellect and wisdom. And there's no indigence more injurious than ignorance and unawareness. Is the president aware? Situational unawareness in private marketplace or any public road in Nigeria today will cost you ransom or your life. But it seems in President Buhari's government, willful ignorance is a job prerequisite. The less you know, the more chances of becoming a minister or government spokesperson. In March 2018, President Buhari admitted that he was unaware that the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, did not comply with his directive to relocate to Benue State, yet the heavens didn't fall, as the IGP was neither queried nor sanctioned. In 2019, an interview with the German news channel, Dutch Well, the host, Tim Sebastian, asked our Minister for Information, Alaji Laiwola Mohammed, pointedly, about the Protection for Internet Falsehood and Manipulation Bill, AKA Social Media Bill. Our minister replied authoritatively that there was no such bill in the National Assembly and that the government was not aware of the same. In January 2019, ahead of the general election, when the then Chief Justice of the Federation, Sir Walter Anogen, was charged before the Code of Conduct Tribunal, the Vice President, Professor Yomi Oshibanjo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, informed a bewildered nation for a fact that yet again, the president was not aware of the charge until two days later. I don't even want to remember the fact that despite several reports of attack on journalists during the 2019 general election, the Nigerian police claimed ignorance of same. Not to talk of the Nigerian Immigration Service saying it was not aware of the travel restrictions placed on Nigeria by the US government in February 2020 even two days after the travel ban was issued. How about Oshomole as APC national chairman, being unaware of the National Assembly's evasion in August 2018 by men of the Department of State Service. Even the Minister of Communication, Dr. Issa Ali Ibrahim Pantemi's confession in October 2020 of not being aware that MTN had begun charging four naira for 20 seconds for USSD bank service was no longer surprising, my people. The list is endless. But now, I hope the president is aware that the current Inspector General of Police tenure has expired, having attained the mandatory age of retirement as spelled out in the Service Rule and the Police Act. Hopefully so. I hope he's also aware of Gaba Shehu's response to Governor Kredulu of Ondo State's ultimatum to kill her headsmen to vacate the state's forests. 
because according to the state government, they said they are not sure he's aware, considering the content of the response from Gabacho. I also hope, apart from the statement by his media aide, he's aware of the demise of the media icon and a former minister for information, who was also his former national chairman, chairman of Congress for Progressive Change, CPC, Prince Tony Momo. Someone asked me if the president was even aware of the coronavirus disease head protection regulation 2021, the same executive order he signed on January 27, mandating the wearing of face masks in public or face six month J term, when on Saturday, two days later, Saturday, January 30th, he failed to wear a face mask and observe social distancing in a gathering of APC in Dara. I be you want so say the president know they are aware. Say social media talk saying wife don't relocate to Dubai. I better not put me for trouble with DSS. But I just wish the president is more aware of the one too many killings and kidnapping happening on various highways in our dear country. I also hope he's aware that his dear tribe, the Fulani tribe, is gradually becoming an endangered species as a few blood sucking killer headsmen have resolved to give the rest a bad name by boldly and unapologetically ravaging farmlands and highways, raping, killing, and taking hostages. Please let the president also be aware that some of the Chibo guests have not been brought back and the parents of Leah Shaibu, the young girl abducted alongside her colleagues in a school in Dapchi, are still hoping that the government will rescue and bring back their daughter soon. I specifically want him to be aware that Nigeria is becoming unsafe by the day. And the fight against corruption is no longer a fight, but a romance. Poverty has gradually taken over many homes. Unemployment figures are rising. Cost of living is getting so high now, and the war against Boko Haram is fought more now on the pages of newspaper than in the Northeast. Lastly, his party men are already plotting for 2023, having not assisted him to deliver on the election promises of 2015 and 2019. Time will not permit me to remind the president of the many things a lot of Nigerians want me to bring to his awareness. But my advocacy today is, while I agree that the president must not be aware of everything going on in the country, he's constitutionally sworn to protect, the action he takes to remedy these things upon be aware is what posterity will remember him for. He should sometimes leave the comfort of the villa and take on the spot assessment of the country himself. He should travel more within than without and hear directly from the people rather than the psychophantic feedback from his aides and party men. Even if he cannot be a general, though retired, to wade off the general insecurity and hunger in the land, he should not add to the general liturgy by being unaware of our cries. Nigeria can move forward if only our rulers and the followers will move. If only our president will stop strolling from Abuja to Katsina and then back to Abuja, then out of the country. If he decides to actually visit, apart from el during election periods, to see things for himself, I think will be be it will, will be better for anyone, it. Regardless of it's loss, amazing. Regardless of damage or anything, it doesn't go around. And I remember in 2015, the reason I was against his presidency at the time and particularly using his age was that a Nigerian president needs to be active, agile, and able to go, go and resolve Niger Delta, go to Northeast, go to Southwest, go everywhere. And we see it happen when he leaves the country and hands over to Vice President Oshibajo. Vice President Oshibajo is able to yes, travel around yes. and calm nerves. Uh, you know, we have 774 local governments. You cannot govern them from your seat in Abuja. And you cannot keep and, listening to aid such as she And being unaware is not an excuse. Okay. This, this general unawareness all the time <laughs> and not aware. General this unawareness. widespread unawareness. It's, it's general, what is it's what the constitution unaware. is what the constitution regard as gross misconduct. If only we have a national assembly that is not a robust okay staff. that have capacity to put the president because the, the, the lethargy or the lukewarmness is as a result of the fact that the National Assembly leadership came out to tell Nigerians that Whatever the president brings to them, they will, they will accept and they yes. will agree. And so behave the, to president, the, the president is not because there is a mechanism constitutionally to actually checkmate the president's conduct. 
which is separation of power, hmm. that the National it's Assembly hold fought. And that power, you see how the Eighth Assembly used it, Saraki and Co., against the, the, the executive. And the executive, they ensured he yes, didn't they, come they, back. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, they, they were up on their toes. But this one we have is a complete case of lukewarmness and lethargy. It took I'll, them I'll two, two uh, issues from uh, what, what you just said. One is the issue of performance. How, how do, do we really measure performance of our leaders? No. And do we put it across to them? And, no. and let them see what they are doing. How are we supposed to put it across to them? No, but APC <laughs> had town hall meetings when they started. But, you know, they knew that they were not performing at some point, so they kind of stopped the, the town hall meeting because that's where meeting. you would have an interface with the people and you would hear straight from the people. Hall. Because the only, the the, only the, time see, the president town hall had, meetings of had a media chat. People. He, after that media chat, they just fed this man goofed, so they stopped. I it. am not sure he can handle a media chat, so do, we, we shouldn't even go there. And so that how is, did we get So here? the issue of his um, engagement capacity as an individual, is, he, did, he didn't get there overnight. That is how his person had always been. But having said that, as a, as a leader, there is the, the so-called informational role. So you are expected to actually be a hub. You know more than each and every of your aides, not that they know more than you. I so it's, 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 a, well, it's, it's an irony. Know, it's, so, it's, so, it's so painful. It's exasperating, you know. When, I'm when, totally frustrated. When they actually come, look you in the face and say, we are not aware. It's, it's, then, that, that's why it's, it's, the, it's the crazy. The worst part of it is that, the worst part of it is that you have Nigerians who say they support the president, who... Who have who are suffering from are partisan politics. partisan obscurantism? They are completely hey, blind. Are oh, they do not know what to do. Hey. Obscurantism hey. before they oh, before before we break. <laughs> rabbi, be, be, going rabbi, so rabbi going um, well. Obscurantically, <laughs> obscurantically. I don't know what it is with Bolaho on the journey of a thousand mile and the extension of Lagos Ibadan standard gauge rate to their papa port. Find out after this from him. One of the best news for me this week was the report that the Lagos Ibadan Standard Gauge Rail has now been extended to their papa port. I learned it is already on Testron. Uh, Pre-independence, the colonial masters built the rails right into a papa port because they knew how critical to trade such an infrastructure is. But like we killed everything else, uh, whether it is Nigerian Airways or Grand North Pyramids, we also killed the Nigerian Railways. We substituted the work of one public train with that of 200 private trucks. We killed the jobs associated with the railway, destroyed the main arterial roads of the country, lost lives to avoidable accident as we rendered our rails, a critical developmental infrastructure, moribund. Today, we are at the verge of re-achieving a developmental feat that we had achieved 60, 70 years ago. That notwithstanding, when I think of the prospect that this extension of the standard gauge rail into the port has for trade, for cost of doing business, for our roads, for the risk to lives and limbs, for the environment and aesthetics, one cannot but give kudos to those who conceived this rebirth and those who made it happen. Ditto the Lagos about on standard gauge. I have not been on that train journey, but I have heard glowing commendations from those who did. However, there is more. Apart from the need to provide more trains, both passengers and good trains, we must remind the government that the Lagos port are boarding by almost twice the volume for which they were constructed. Therefore, the rail will only solve part of the problem. The other part should be to invest in some other ports across our coastlines to distribute the excess boarding away from Lagos. As a natural harbor with 20 million population markets, the largest effective demand in West Africa, Lagos will always remain the commercial heartbeat of Nigeria. But we can make it easier to live there. In the same vein, earlier this year, when the Apapa Oron Shoki Road works being executed by Dangote got extended to my area at the Antoni Bagada Axis. 
and I observed the quality of what was being done. Excavation, stabilization of the subsoil, laying of the steel, then the concrete. I took a video and I shared. From the various reactions, a particular comment struck me. Have they finished it? Will they finish it? It was a genuine fear based on antecedents. However, today it's done. And everybody who passes or pass that road know this is one good road. I'm told it is similar to what was done with the Obajana Kaba Road. Good work. But how many kilometers in all are these roads? We need to expand this model, bring on more players, and let us implement the model for some more critical roads. My advocacy. Call this one a tickle on the government. We see the bits you are doing, and we say kudos. But as you know, too, there is much more. Can you please disgrace the second Niger Bridge so that the next government won't have to use it as a campaign promise? Say so you also know that we have been on this Lagos Ibadan for seven to eight years. Can we close it out this year? More importantly, we need to bring in more private sector participation into the provision of this infrastructure. And my plea is, can we please make the process transparent? Mm, that transparency. I Bongo. love your advocacy, Bolaho. Yeah. I love it. Yes, uh, we know you're doing the bit that you can and you're doing, you got some right, but there are quite a lot that you're still uh, not getting right. And I join you uh, in advocacy. I thought you were telling Bola that you didn't get it right. No, 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 no. no. She's talking to the government. Eh? <laughs> so I joined Bola. <laughs> And I mean, no, they do, I mean, they do room. Where that, that place, <laughs> that place, that Bola I, didn't get it right. <laughs> I joined Bola in saying that this journey of a thousand miles, and can we shorten it? Uh, let me quickly add the one in Lagos. Our blue rail and uh, ah, Kinecon rail. That was, Please, that when was are you finishing it? It's been abandoned it. for five years. Six, when no. are you finishing it? Since, when, uh, since Fashola left. When, uh, yes. when a new Can government, we also finish that when as a new well, government please? come, if a new government comes to Lagos, they will now say they wasted uh, 20 they wasted years of years. APC <laughs> Lagos. It's, uh, it's, you see, ordinarily, these are not things. I have never, um, in this my short life, because you have many years to live, I have never seen government or political party campaign with all these kind of roads, you know, that climbs. It's who we'll tar road, who we'll provide pipe bone water. Those things are we'll, basic. Amenities. Those things are basic. Or we provide light. Those things are, there are. They are given. They are given. Statutorily, you have agencies, it is their responsibility to do those things. In a working system. We had, those days, we had highway maintenance department in the Ministry of Works. And we had Wole Wole's. We, you didn't need Today to. Today we had to FEMA. We have FEMA. Those FEMA <laughs> have <Yes>. become political. <laughs> You know, to the extent that now a governor will do a pipe bond water. Pipe bond water. That's manual uh, tap. NYC uh, project. One. And yeah. then the governor will you commission put? it. You will take advert, newspaper advert, which is, will be more expensive than the cost of now, the project, the of the to project. celebrate the governor for Real providing one. dividend High of service. democracy. A minister will uh, tar road. And then we'll say, oh, the man has brought dividend of democracy. When you now ask, is this his money? They'll say, after all, some stole the money. They didn't, didn't use it. Anything. So this one that is using it. Because you ask a question, how well do we even assess our government? Fantastic. They've done this one. There's need to take it to our, our papa port. If you get there, they already retracts. Okay, two I things. was watching quickly. I was watching a video of a train carrying more than 2,000. 2,000 containers. Yes. One that's, train. That's what the, how it's supposed to be. containers at a go. So that the roads could be free for us and we so, stop losing limbs and lives on the roads due so, to these trucks. On the matter of stealing, I've, hear, I've heard politicians say that um, Nigerians are unsure of what they want. Because once they get into office, if you had you know, good intentions, right? What happens immediately is treasure comes with our health issue, well, our comes with his children's school fees, and before you know, the commonwealth that we're supposed to use to build infrastructure, which is the <laughs> duty of government, we all share it. 
and all of you will go and praise me outside, and that's the end of it. Uh, 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 now, you said that we shouldn't even be um, in a developed world, we shouldn't even be, you know, um, campaigning for elections with I'm going to build road, I'm going to. Okay, all the things that President Buhari campaigned with in 2015, a lot of them still left undone. He came back in 2015, 2016, yeah. and said the campaigns were from his party. The manifesto was from his party. No, he doesn't even agree level. with some of them. Like 5,000 Naira were very See, same. Like uh, we will create 3 Jumoke, million jobs not, every year. So that we don't conflate the issues. The question is, if you had head plan in place and the hospitals were working, will Treasure come to ask you for money? To Bam. go to the hospital. The new who comes Let and wants to uh, uh, advance. Before we go, please look for a, a word from Rabbi. Dr. <laughs> 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 Rabbi, I, I read the advocacy before now, and uh, what I want to say is that if you look at uh, the Apapa Port, that's what I want to talk about because that is the station, the commercial station where Nigeria interface with uh, the, the world. world, and then that particular place is impossible. It is completely incongruent, and because it is incongruent. You are asking yourself, don't we have port in Port Harcourt? Don't we have in Calabar? Don't we have even dry uh, port in uh, Kaduna and uh, Kano and all that? But we have not been able to decentralize this thing. What I think the Nigerian government should do is to decentralize and dredge the water channels so that you can decongest that. We have said this over and Bola over has again. begged on our behalf and today. We are not, uh, doing anything Bola has pleaded on our okay. behalf today. Um, so the, the conversations we have here will be incomplete without you. Um, here is what some of you are saying about last week's program. Responding to the advocacy on religion, social media user Real Truth underscore Hurt says, it is so sad how a nation can become so religious than being educated. This is what a nation gets when we have a lot of religious-minded people than the educated ones. I always ask people, if we say our God is the Almighty and we are still doing fighting and killing all in his name, then what is the need of praying to him to bless the works of our hands and our thoughts? I underscore Kingman says, hypocrisy is when you fly, fight for God in the name of religion created by men. And leave God to fight for you when your government has ruined all your lives. <laughs> and instead of <laughs> channeling that same energy for such cause, now Alaji Musa you fight. <laughs> Madness. Okay. Follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash theadvocatenj. When we get it right, Jumoke has something to say about the astronomical electricity rate in 2021. Stay with us. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, it, it does. does. It I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. My neighbors and I have been discussing the astronomical electricity rates in 2021. Is electrical power only for the powerful? We're not discussing how Nigeria is still distributing less than 5,000 megawatts of power in 2021. No. We're just concerned about how rich people can jostle for their available power. The people who can afford big gen, small gen, solar, and inverter batteries are the ones still wanting premium power at the most expensive rates that their poor neighbors cannot afford. 
Is it every Nigerian that can afford premium power at 53 Naira? That's at the time that we were considering it to. It's even higher now. People are now using gin to pump water and switch on ACs. Isn't it similar like public power is almost as expensive as powering your gen? A neighbor said to me, if you are spending so much on your prepaid meter, you probably had an outstanding bill when you were on estimated billing. So on your first recharge for a particular month, part of the outstanding is deducted. We called the electricity company and found it to be true. But were we owing you on the estimated bills? We argued back and forth. They said they had been removing 50 naira at every recharge, but that would take over 100 years for them to recoup our debts. So in 2021, even with higher electricity tariff, every time we recharged, they withdrew a huge sum. How come no one told us before they took this decision? You just assume we can afford to pay this imaginary debt in quick succession? My goodness. Another neighbor suggested, why not use the money to replace inverter battery or buy diesel and enjoy your AC regenerator? We had started rationing ACs to slow down consumption, hence his suggestion. A third neighbor said, the best and cheapest option is still the premium with at least 22 hours. Unfortunately, we missed the opportunity. Now, we don't have premium, and we're still paying for premium. Some of us had argued that if everyone that can afford premium power rates has that arrangement with the electricity company, we all will eventually fall back to few hour supply. As they haven't increased transmission capacity, they're just offering what's available to the people who are willing to pay for it. Everyone else should fire their I better pass my neighbor James or put on candles. A doctor neighbor quipped, everyone should consider solar. My four batteries get a full charge with less than three hours of sunlight, and it is charging while working. So our own power of days, it still gets two days on one day off. I have a full charge by 6 p.m., ready to go all night till sunlight next day. I only need gel to pump water and chill fridge every now and then. Actually, I had an old petrol gel lying around, so I went for that during the day. It uses about 5,000 to 7,000 naira worth of petrol a week and can carry fridge and iron if you rotate it. That battery cost scared me, said neighbor three again. All these big men don't seem to understand the, the problem, affordability. Yes, no more power subsidy, but waiting government did do for us, if. Your own is good. You people are debating. Uh, they said they are deducting five naira from your own. Between January 2nd and January ending, I spent 80,000 naira. Estimated bill. No, no. Prepaid. 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 80,000 hey. naira. Goodness gracious. I live in a three bedroom flat so that I don't think it's one big house. 80,000 naira. Wow. And then 30,000 naira on fear. Because the light also is not um, bad too. Not that I am owing. I've had that prepaid for long, so I'm not owing. In the office, I spent I spent seventy five thousand, seventy eight thousand on diesel because I have a bigger gen in the office. So I prefer to run the diesel gen. It's cheaper. It carries all the air condition, it... and so it's cheaper for me mm. than even using you know electricity, the electricity from government. That's how bad it has become. Yes, sir. Sometimes you ration AC and fridge. Yes, right. sir. You don't know which one to put on. And yet, because now they tell you there are some estate, they give them constant light because they are ready to pay times two. Yes. And you, they still charge you times two hmm. of the rates. And so is the tariff. Anytime you vent, you know, what usually 30,000 would give you before. Now it is sixty thousand that will give it give you that I, it's, you, it's that megawatts. Um, two and a half, um, two and a half times. Yes, so exactly. it will be like seventy five thousand, eighty thousand. Yes, give you the exactly. Same power. So a situation where you were using thirty five thousand before, now I will have to use eighty thousand naira. Yes, sir. For that same consumption, and yet we are all silent. The cost of PMS is high. 
they tell you that when they remove their hand, the price will go down. Mm -hmm. The cost of uh, uh, power uh, is high, yes. and yet it's not available. The cost of gas is high, Jesus. and they will tell you it is uh, rich men that use gas. Uh, yeah. old, uh, poor kerosene people use firewood. Kerosene is high. Then the question you now ask: Did you do you buy kerosene? What's the government? How did you know? <laughs> If the essence of government is the security and welfare of the people, even that, the which the government is do. high, is because we we have a very funny economic system where you have crude, you have gas, you are flaring the gas. That is power itself. Yes. You are flaring the gas, then the your crude, you take it abroad, then you, you import it fine. again. Oh. Okay. Uh, then yeah. you kerosene the same thing. And all that. So these things will continue to go high until we come together to decide exactly how we want to run this country. Mm. There is no way you will put us on this rat race and then come back the next year to tell us that uh, you are going to, uh, we should vote for you. We will when reduce you, power. When, which when brings, you, us, which brings us back we'll, to we'll liberal seats advocacy to. today. Is the president aware of all this? No, Is he aware all. that you're paying for electricity from your 30,000 naira minimum mm. wage? You're paying mm. much more than that. I don't want to call names. I was somewhere yesterday oh, and I was discussing with somebody who goes to the village. Said, ah. One said, that, look, I won't lie to you. The president is not aware. We followed him to Casina Daura and that the man just walked and he was looking at his cow like this. That he's not aware of anything. That was what even prompted my being with the president away. And then the next one said that when they, he, his uncle would have you know one-on-one -on -one interaction and then break the hardship down for him. And the president was like, are you sure this thing is really happening like that? It means the man is locked up somewhere. Well, he has ah. always said it now. That he's always well, on TV they're, 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 every day. We see there could be a capture. He has always there, said it no himself. Doubt about that. So if, if you have people around you who are ensure, you yourself, you know one know, then you have people around you who We're shield sure. you away from the realities. That, no, that, be, that becomes a problem. Yeah. Incidentally, my, my experience with uh, power is, is slightly different. I, I, I don't know exactly how much... Uh, it costs. That's because in my house, my wife handles power. The power. Now, here the, the comment is that the rate has literally double or yes. more than double. Yes. So that one is there. Triple. Yes. Triple but the, where, where, where it differs slightly from your experience is that you have a vata. She prefers it to how the power situation used to be. She said before, by the time she combines. That are cheaper Nepal bill, Nepal bill with, with, diesel. The diesel, with the diesel or petrol or whatever. It's more. That is, that is our own uh, 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 version of it. Yes. You know. Then we also need to pay attention to what the poor pays. Because what they were telling us is that the poor were not even affected. Yeah. And I sincerely hope <laughs> that they are true. not they get it's not true. It's not true. It's not true. They get estimated billions. No, they have even no, they, they have means of being that. But they said it to okay. me because I have yeah. to go there yeah. to complain, so, and they said that we are on band one. It's practicable. It's yeah, practicable. no, they said we are on band we, one. So there's some particular estate you are on fifty three naira, fifty six naira, but yes. And so and it used to be twenty seven naira. Where the question now is why they agree that they cannot continue to subsidize power. But the question is, how do you determine band one and band so two? So the rich, they have ways of the way. rich are paying way, more. No That's way. what they're doing. The question is the area, area. Yes. area. Like Magodo, like Kukutu GRA in Lagos, like Ikeja GRA. Like, yeah, the they, poor they people paying. that live in my area, you cannot say they are rich. God bless you, sir. Those ones are trapped in between rich people. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> they need they, they, proximity. <laughs> they will pay high. This is that, what is, I that is the price of we living with the go. rich. Uh, this is what I did. <laughs> this is what I did. <laughs> to cut costs, I use solar. So yeah. I'm busy. Oh, you're part of my rich neighbors now. You don't no, understand. No, no, it's not about. No, tell me about you after the break. Evans will be wrapping things up with the nagging question of wealth distribution and the tragedy of the commons. Don't move a muscle. We'll be right back. The greatest enemy of freedom is the alignment of political power with wealth. This alignment destroys the common world, that is, the natural world of localities and the local economies of household, neighborhoods, and community, and so destroys democracy, of which the common world is the foundation 
and practical means as this leaves society with the tragedy of the commons. The tragedy of the commons is a situation in a shared resource system where individual users acting independently according to their own self-interest behave contrary to the common good of all users by depleting or spoiling the shared resources through their collective action. The concept originated in an essay written in 1833 by the British economist William Foster Lloyd, who used the hypothetical example of the effects of unregulated grazing on common land, also known as a common. In Great Britain and Ireland, the concept became widely known as the tragedy of the commons over a century later. In modern economic context, commons is taken to mean any shared and unregulated resource, such as the atmosphere, ocean, rivers, crude oil, gold, and a host of other mineral resources. The tragedy of the commons is one way of making a demand for accountability for the overexploitation of the commonwealth of the people without a corresponding payback to developing the area so affected by the environmental devastation and widespread pollution. Nigeria is a true reflection of the tragedy of the commons. She sits on huge natural resources and earns for herself the poverty capital of the world. Less than 1% of our population plunders the state resources and spill the wastages on our faces. Why 90%, the other 90% left, either are confused, ignorant, or incorrigible. In Delta State, for example, the government controls the commonwealth and continuously sideline Ndokwa land. Ndokwa bears the brunt for the economic sins of the state while she sits as the headquarters of the tragedy of the commons. A state where her immediate past and present governors, His Excellency Dr. Emmanuel Udwan and His Excellency Dr. Ifan Yokoa, respectively, are both medical doctors, but the health center in Indokwa land have remained under lock and key for the past 14 years. The inequitable distribution of the commonwealth of the states and the unholy marginalization of the Indokwa nation is a recipe for conflict, if not well checked and corrected soonest. The commoners in Nigeria have a duty at this point to make a statement for themselves, as the government have consistently failed them to this day. In an attempt to assuage the plight of the commons, the federal government created a 13% derivation fund for states with oil resources. Why the federal government hands the resources to the states for the commons, the state converts it into other use. So the commons are trapped in their tragedy. I wish to advocate, therefore, that the state must re-examine its strategy and create an equitable balance for wealth creation for the commons and deliberately pull them out of poverty and tragedy. A proper management of resources and a diligent distribution of same will extinguish the tragedy of the commons and abate their misgivings. I shall go to rabbi again. With all these pleasantries, you don't want to go rabbi before. It's rabbi. This is not from rabbi. He's not tired of seeing you. Aside from him going to rabbi, is this Undokwa matter? We saw you on TV. This Undokwa. 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 Undokwa is just a case for the larger society. Yeah. Right. We saw you on TV. Undokwa. But one thing you should know is that in Undokwa is only prison. He has told us that's his own pain gone gone. That's so you cited federal prisons there. We should be going to prison.
Uh, no, we now is the health center that hasn't been open for 14 years. How so? Udokwankwani Udo is a representation of the larger. decadence in the larger society. True. Correct. Um, it's um, a metaphor mm. for the Nigerian states that um, in the midst of plenty, a land so blessed yet so poor, Very true. in the midst of plenty, we are the poverty capital of the world. Imagine that. You see, um, you go to oil-rich states, Baeza, Rivers. When you leave the state capital, you begin to wonder if um, <laughs> you are still in the state, the so-called oil-rich states. You go to Delta State. Sometimes I traveled from Asaba to Wari, passing through Ndokwa, Ozoro, you know, and all of that. And I asked myself, is this the grade A road that they said Okowa is doing? And immediately, I, then I got to worry. I left worry years ago, and I got to worry, and I asked. I called the commissioner for information. I said, Oga, there's nothing here. Mm. There's nothing I want to there. talk about it. He said, uh, you see, our first four years, we use it to study uh, the hey, topography. When we, when we, when we they write the exam. <laughs> and what we can do. <laughs> and so, and I, and I was like... This is, this is sad. Perfect. You know, we sit down in Lagos here, we lambast government, governor in Lagos. That's no wonder, you know, governor, Lagos, you know, always feels that, look, they are top notch, they are doing excellently well. Because governors in our That's states, in every other state, it's horrible. It's a shadow of what you would describe as, as governance. And, and I'm not sad, but I, I, I commend you for being a voice. And the school fees so. that Udo Kwan 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 contributed <laughs> is not wasted. <laughs> you know, I, I, I ask myself yeah. that if the healthcare institution is shut down for 14 years, so in this season of COVID-19... You yeah. drink Agbo. Agbo. Wow. You know, you, you know it, it reminds me of what Bill Gates said about the need yeah. for us to go and invest in, in it's, our it's, healthcare, it's, primary healthcare... Yeah. Especially yeah. instead of okay, That's now of they will use it for 100 billion, be 400 billion procurement. They will bring your own share to Ndokwa. Some contractors have made money at the same time. Ndokwa people will still die, they will expire before they get to Ndokwa. diseases yeah. because they, they, they have no care. Let me be clear, I agree with you. We don't have uh, storage. Former for Governor it. Peter Obi has even come out that if the federal government wants him to negotiate this purchase, yeah. it should not take more than 150 billion. Let's yeah. save 200 billion. Yeah. He said they shouldn't use a contractor, that they should do it directly. That Why would they use contractors? Because the budget is for contractors. The budget is for contractors. Because if they don't somebody use has to make money. If they don't use contractor, how do you think? Uh, how do they kick back? The they boys. Know, the boys will share something the and then they will not use for election. Well, that's, that's, that. oh. that's our problem. Meanwhile, basic, basic things are mm. not. Sad. I keep remembering uh, Professor Likoye Ransom Kuti. God and the bless work his memory. He did. God bless his memory. And the work he did, you know, for that the private. That time stealing was not this. You know, uh, it's, it's, was, uh, you know before it was 10% you kick back and you will be tried for it. But now mm. it is. it became 90% kickback. Hell. Now it is 100%. In certain instances, 100%. So just take that away. While we continue to push for the best option for Nigeria and Nigerians, we urge you not to relent in playing your role, no matter how small. Don't forget the advocacy continues on our social media platform on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NGO on Twitter, and Instagram at plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NGO. To catch up with our previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash the advocate ng. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Join us next week, same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Have a great week. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a great week. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country 
when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.